Okay. The, uh, the idea of recursion, the habit of using recursion, these can be hard for students when they're first working with recursion, when they're first seeing these concepts. So let's, um, let's try some simple examples. So first of all, um, anything that you can compute by referring to a simpler case, is a good candidate for recursion. Like suppose I wanted to find two to the n. Well, we could always find two to the n, right? We could just make a function which returns two to the n. But suppose I wanted to find two to the n. What is this? This is actually equal to two times two times two times two, a whole bunch of times, right? How many times? n times. So is there a way to find two to the n using two to the n minus one? Absolutely. I just take 2 to the n minus 1 and I multiply by 2. So let's try to use that. Make a function 2 to the n. So what I'd want to do is I'd want to say, hey, let's say 2 to the n minus 1 by plugging in 2 to the, uh, by plugging in minus 1 into 2 to the n and then multiplying by two. But as you know, I've gotten used to this maybe from the last examples, this is gonna run forever because we're gonna constantly refer to the function in order to find the function. So what could I do here? Well, what I could do is I could say, okay, I know that two to the one is two. So I could say two if n is equal to one, else that, and now let's see if it works. Two to the n, let's try it on uh, 8, 256, so that is correct. If I wanted to start this even earlier, I know that 2 to the 0 is 1, and that will also work. I'll get the same thing right here. Um, okay. Um, we're going to do some something kind of silly. Suppose I want a function that just prints n. It doesn't print n, returns n. Sorry. We haven't actually covered printing without actually returning things. Printing as a side effect comes later. So uh, let's try a function that, you know, give me n. And of course I could do return n and that would work. But let's think about that. Can I compute n by finding n minus one? It's a nice exercise. So pause the video and think about whether you can write this. Maybe give it a shot. Um, Okay, let's try to write it together now. So what I could do is I could say, uh, give me n, n minus one. Now, what would I have to add to that? I'd have to add one. And I could have it return zero if n equals zero. Okay, and let's try give me n of eight. And you'll see it gives me eight. Uh, silly function, very silly function, but it's good to think about how things can be computed uh, recursively. Uh, maybe another example. What if we wanted to multiply two numbers? So a times b of a and b. Okay, so I could always do that, but let's try to think. Because there are some places where you you really need to do things recursively, even though we're not there in this case. So think about how you could do this. Maybe stop, try to write it yourself. Okay, well, I know that a times b, and this is not what I'm returning, this is just a side note, but a times b is equal to a times b minus one, plus what? Well, plus a, one more time. So I can use this. What I could do is I could say, hey, give me a times b of a and b minus one. Now this is a recursive function with two different variables, but we only need to reduce the b minus one because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, b minus one times, and then just multiply, or just, sorry, just add one more a to the end of it, right? a times b, is a plus a plus a plus a b times. I'm going to take a plus a plus a b minus one times, 
and then add one more A to the end. Uh, okay, and I need to not always call the same function. I need a base case. So what am I going to do for this? Well, I could say, hey, give me zero if B is equal to zero. Now you see, since B is the thing that we're reducing, that's the one I have to worry about because this is going to stop when it hits b equals zero. It's true the product is zero if a is zero, but I need to make this process stop. So that's why I need to use b equals zero there. And now let's try an example. Three times five, and I get 15, or five times three. And notice that with these examples, you do not want to stick negative numbers in here. I'm writing all of these for positive integers because well, the base case happens when we hit zero, and uh, if we start in the negatives and go down, we're never going to hit zero. So it's just going to keep going, or try to go forever.